The Porsche 911 GT1 is a car designed and developed by German automobile manufacturer Porsche AG to compete in the GT1 class of sports car racing, which also required a street legal version for homologation purposes. The limited production street legal version developed as a result was named the 911 GT1 Strassen version. With the revival of international sports car racing in the mid-1990s through the BPR Global GT series, Porsche expressed interest in returning to top-level sports car racing and went about developing its competitor for the GT1 category. Cars in this category were previously heavily modified versions of road cars, such as the McLaren F1 and the Ferrari F40. However, when the 911 GT1 was unveiled in 1996, Porsche exploited the rule book to the full and stunned the sports car fraternity. Rather than developing a race version of one of their road-going models, what they created was effectively a purpose-built sports prototype. But in order to comply with regulations, a street legal version was developed called the 911 GT1 Strassen version, literally a road-going racing car. The GT1 had very little in common with the 911, only sharing the front and tail light assemblies of the production 911 along with front chassis design in spite of its 911 moniker. The car actually had very little in common with the 911 of the time, only sharing the front and rear headlamps with the production sports car. However, its frontal chassis was shared with the then 911, while the rear of the chassis was derived from the 962 along with its water-cooled, twin-turbocharged and intercooled, four valves per cylinder 3,164cc flat-six engine fuel fed by Bosch Motronic 5. Two fuel injection, which was longitudinally mounted in a rear mid-engine, rear-wheel drive layout, compared to the rear engine, rear-wheel drive layout of a conventional 911. The engine generated a power output of about 600 PS. In comparison, the 993 generation 911 GT2, which was otherwise the company's highest performance vehicle at the time, used an air-cooled engine with only two valves per cylinder. The 911 GT1 made its debut in the BPR Global GT series at the brand's hatch four hours, where Hans Joachim Stuck and Thierry Boutsen won comfortably. Although they were racing as an invited entry and were thus ineligible for points, they followed up by winning at Spa and Ralph Kelliner's and Manuel Collard triumphed for the factory team at Zhuhai. The 1996 911 GT1 clocked at a top speed of exactly 330 km per hour on the legendary Mulsanne Strait in the practice sessions of the 1996 Le Mans 24 hours race. The 1997 variant of the GT1, called the 911 GT1 Evo also previewed the 996 generation of the 911 while having improved aerodynamics towards the end of the 1996 season. Porsche made revisions to the 911 GT1 in preparation for the 1997 season. The front end of the car was revised including new bodywork which featured headlamps that previewed the all-new generation of the Porsche 911 which would be unveiled in 1997. The revised car was known as the 911 GT1 Evo. As far as performance goes, the car had the same engine as the previous version, but new aerodynamic elements allowed the 1997 version to be considerably faster than the 1996 version, acceleration was better. Although the top speed was still around 330 km per hour on the La Sarte circuit. At Le Mans the works cars led the race but did not last the full distance, a privately entered 1996 specification GT1 managed 5th overall and 3rd in its class. The 1998 variant of the GT1 bore little resemblance to the previous two versions and had construction and bodywork similar to a sports prototype for the 1998 season. Porsche developed an all-new car, the 911 GT198. Designed to match the also-new Toyota GT1 and Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR, the 911 GT198 featured bodywork that bore more of a resemblance to traditional sports prototypes than the previous two models. A new sequential gearbox was installed to reduce shift time. Engine control also moved to a TAG electronic systems TAG 3. 8 ECU. As per the regulations, a street legal version of the 911 GT198 was spawned but it is believed that only one variant was produced which was still sufficient to satisfy the new regulations. During the 1998 FIA International GT season, the 911 GT198 struggled to match the pace of the Mercedes, which also was improved with the main reason being down to the air restrictor rules which were regarded as unfavorable to the turbocharged engine. The Michelin tires of the factory team and especially the Pirelli of the private Zach Speed team were also considered inferior to the Bridgestone tires of the Mercedes. At the 1998 Le Mans, however, it was a different story. 
The BMW V12 LM retired with wheel bearing trouble, and the Mercedes CLK LM cars had oil pump troubles in the new V8 engines that replaced the former V12. The Toyota GT1, which was considered to be the fastest car, also suffered gearbox reliability problems. The 911 GT198, despite being slower than the Toyota or the Mercedes, fulfilled Porsche's slim hopes, taking both first and second place overall thanks to reliability. Giving Porsche its record-breaking 16th overall win at Le Mans, more than any other manufacturer in history. At the Petit Le Mans race and road Atlanta, the 911 GT198 of Yannick Dalmas made a spectacular backward flip and landed rear first before hitting the side barriers. As did the BMW V12 LMR at the same race in 2000, and most infamously the Mercedes-Benz CLR at Le Mans in 1999. The GT198 was set up with higher downforce in the race than the previous two years, which reduced its maximum speed to 310 km per hour. However, in the 1998 Le Mans 24 hours test days, the car hit 330 km per hour on the Mulsanne straight on a lower downforce setup. With Mercedes dominating FIA GT1 in 1998, all other entries including Porsche withdrew for the 1999 season. The GT1 class was cancelled, and the FIA GT championship was contested with GT2 cars. Porsche could have entered at Le Mans, but chose not to try to defend the win of 1998 against the new entrants from other manufacturers. Champion Racing brought a 911 GT1 Evo to America to race in the American Le Mans series, but was only allowed to do so as an LMP. Class entry, where it proved uncompetitive against actual prototypes such as the BMW V12 LMR. Following Champion's purchase of a 911 GT1 Evo for 1999. Gunner Racing offered a custom race car to the team with intentions to race in 2000. The car, known as the Gunner G99, was a custom-built 911 GT1 with an open cockpit. The chassis was made from scratch yet remained nearly identical to the 911 GT1 mechanically, even using the bulk of the body parts. A large roll bar was put over the open cockpit to help protect the driver. A3. 6-liter flat 6, from a Porsche 911 GT3, was used in place of the standard 911 GT1 unit. However, Champion would instead turn to buy a Lola B2K-10, so the Gunner G99 was temporarily abandoned. The car would resurface in the Rolex Sports Car Series in 2002, yet would not be allowed to race until it had a roof again. Therefore, Gunner Racing rebuilt the car with a near-identical GT1 roof, and briefly competed in 2003. The car would take a best finish of second in class twice before being retired due to lack of funding and due to the ban on SRP cars in favor of Daytona prototypes. 1997-911 GT1 regulations for the GT1 category stipulated that to be eligible, a total of 25 cars must be built for road use. Porsche developed two prototype cars, both fully road legal versions. The first was delivered in early 1996 to the German Federal Ministry of Transport, Building, and Urban Development for compliance testing, which it passed. The second prototype vehicle is in the hands of a Bahrain-based private car collector Khalid Abdul Rahim. These two cars feature 993 style front headlights. The production car, dubbed 911 GT1 Strass Inversion, was a run of approximately 20 units which were built in 1997 and featured 996 style front headlights. The majority of the production model was finished in Arctic silver or fern white, but three cars were finished in unique colors polar silver, Indian red, and pastel yellow. A single car, the 911 GT198 Strass Inversion, was built in 1998 to homologate the all-new racing version under the new FIA regulations. Porsche 911 GT198 The engine had to be slightly detuned to meet European emissions laws, although it's 400 kW at 7,200 revolutions per minute and 600 Nm of torque at 4. 250 revolutions per minute proved to be more than adequate, the car could accelerate to 100 km per hour from a standstill in 3. 9 seconds on its way to a top speed of 308 km per hour. Auto Motor und Sport tested the street legal version in 1997 with the following results. Thanks for watching.